So today I am here to talk to you about the dieting cycle, getting out of this damaging dieting cycle. Really, really, really important subject because the dieting cycle, um, you know, you're probably familiar with it if you're in this group. It's the cycle where you diet, you fail, you give up, you diet, you fail, you give up, and so on. And, you know, the, the cycle looks a bit different for everyone. It has a slightly different length for everyone. But ultimately, you're stuck in this perpetual cycle where you're trying to lose weight. You keep failing, failing in <laughs> quote unquote, because it's a strong word and failure isn't always a bad thing. You know, it, failure is is learning it's it's information and we need to look at what's going on here when you fail to to understand what we need to do differently next time um but for the people that i work with often this failure is is different you know for some people it's that the diet wasn't sustainable. It was too restrictive. So they just couldn't keep going with it. And for others, it's that they were doing everything they were supposed to do, but they still weren't seeing results. Either way, you give up because it's not working in one way or another. So you give up and then you end up feeling really uh, fed up with yourself, demoralized guilty that you've uh, given in that you ruined everything and these are just words I'm using that I've heard other people use and um, that's not what I think about what what you're doing in that cycle um so you know you feel like you've ruined everything you feel guilty and um and then that tends to lead to comfort eating you know partly because you've restricted yourself and cut out all the things that you love and then you end up overeating them afterwards and sometimes it's a comfort thing you just feel so rubbish about yourself you feel so guilty that you failed again and then you reach for the stuff that makes you feel better but then that makes you feel worse because it worsens the problem and so you end up geeing yourself up again and starting all over again maybe with the same diet maybe with a different diet it doesn't really matter because the problem isn't the particular diet that you're choosing the problem is that type of approach that restrictive dieting approach so one thing to be really aware of is that this dieting cycle this dieting approach where we are restrictive it's so damaging and it's damaging physically and it's damaging mentally um, you know, you're probably well aware of the, the mental effects. If you've been through this dieting cycle yourself, it leaves you feeling, you know, sometimes like, like you've got low self-esteem. It can leave you with low self-worth because you keep trying and failing. And that is not good for your self-esteem. Um, but also it can leave you feeling really like obsessed with food um, it can leave you feeling like food is the enemy and just like you've got this really toxic relationship with food, which again is not helpful because when you're, when you kind of G yourself up again, all you're doing is just overthinking it and you just spend so much time, you know, just second guessing yourself and just not really knowing what you're doing, whether you're supposed to be doing it, whether it's really helping and it can leave you feeling really overwhelmed and just like you need someone to just tell you what on earth you're supposed to be eating. And that whole mindset relationship with food is a, you know, it's 50% of, of success. So that is a, an area that gets really damaged when we keep going through this dieting cycle. But also there's the physical damage, excuse me. <clears throat> and um when you keep losing weight and regaining it, yo-yoing, what research has determined is that it's worse for you than just not even bothering at all. You know, if you didn't ever diet 
and your weight kind of stayed about the same let's say that you stayed a, a few stone overweight or something like that just an example it doesn't really matter how much let's just say you stayed overweight and you didn't bother dieting if you compare a group of people like that and you you compare them to um a group of people who have dieted for years the average weight gain is way higher in the dieting group because every time you lose weight you tend to regain more than you lost and it might be really minimal you know the that excess but over time it adds up and so we find that people who diet tend to actually be heavier in the long run. Um, but also all of that dieting, it really messes up your metabolism because it's it can cause damage to your, um, what we call mitochondria, which are these little energy factories in every single cell in your body. And they make energy from your food, from your fuel. And they can also make energy from your fat. So, there's any damage to these mitochondria then your fat burning can be less efficient so damage to the mitochondria can occur with yo-yo dieting and inflammation and various other imbalances um but also when you do the diets the, the typical diets you tend to lose muscle and that's a really big problem because muscle is metabolically active and muscle is burning calories you know your muscle is burning calories for you right now and the more muscle you have or the leaner your muscle the better and the easier it is to lose weight the more yo-yoing you do the more more um times you lose weight and gain weight over and over the less muscle you'll have even if you are quite active because if you are not putting enough fuel in your body, if you're not giving your body what it needs, you're not going to be building muscle. You you know, you you might be trying to build muscle, doing the right type of exercise to build muscle, but if the fuel isn't there, your body just can't build muscle from thin air. It needs the resources and raw materials to do that, which means you need the combination of the right things to eat plus the right type of exercise to support your body through whatever imbalances you have or metabolic issues you have. So I went off on a bit of a tangent there, <laughs> but the key point that I really wanna make here is that the perceived problem, the problem that so many women think they have is a lack of willpower. A lack of willpower to resist the cravings, a lack of willpower to make good food choices. But that's really not the case. It's very rarely the case. Okay, some people are going to have crap willpower um, and have everything they need to succeed and don't. That's going to be a very, very, very small minority, especially in my experience. And I've spoken to, I'm going to guess, thousands of women now about this. And the so the problem that you think you have is a lack of willpower but the real problem the real problem is the diet it's the approach that you're taking it's not meeting your needs it's not addressing the underlying causes of cravings of your sluggish metabolism of your low energy levels of your poor sleep or whatever it is that's holding you back that's causing you to fall off track time and time again or whatever it is that is stopping you from seeing the results even when you are super disciplined that's the real problem and to summarize what that problem might be we're talking about hormones we're talking about gut bacteria your thyroid stress poor quality sleep inflammation sometimes medications um deficiencies, food intolerances, things that are disrupting the way that your body functions. So that's the issue is that these diets, they don't address these imbalances. It doesn't matter how few calories you eat or how much exercise you do, that has zero impact 
on your hormones, your gut bacteria, and all those other things that I mentioned. And I'll go come back to this, but hormones are really the main thing that control the way that your body burns and stores fats. So as I say, the solution is addressing these imbalances. And by doing that, you build up your metabolism so that you don't have to try and survive on a restrictive diet. And, you know, as well as building up your metabolism by addressing these underlying imbalances and getting rid of the cravings by addressing these underlying imbalances, we also need to work on the mindset. So we're talking earlier about your relationship with food and how important that is for, uh, you know, a sustainable approach that's also enjoyable. So they're the things that we need to work on and we need to do it with an approach that isn't restrictive. And that is all possible. You know, we do that every day in the nourish method. So this is going back to what I was saying just now about the hormones, how hormones are really the things that control the way your body burns fat and calories have no impact on these hormones. This is something that I'm digging into in much more detail in my web class tonight. It's at 7 p.m. Today's Tuesday. And this is, it's called Stop Dieting and Start Seeing Results. And it's a web class where we're going to be digging into those mechanisms, looking at the science of how does your body actually burn fat? What's fat there for? How does your body actually determine whether it's going to burn and store fat? What things affect that fat burning? Um, And we're not just talking about food. We we are talking about food and blood sugars, but we're talking about more than that. So if this sounds like it would be helpful to you, then make sure you save your space. Uh, I'll drop the link in the comments once I'm done. And all you got to do is pop in your name and your email address, and then you will save your space for tonight's web class. And if you come along live, then I have goodies that I give away to those that are there live. If you can't make it live, register anyway, because I will send you out the recording tomorrow. Um, You won't get the goodies, but you'll still have the recording to watch. So I hope to see you there. And I'll be back later in the week with another topic to talk you through. Um, In fact, let me just have a look at my notes and I can tell you what it is. Ah, so it's building on what we've been talking about here, talking about how to lose weight without restrictive dieting. So hopefully I'll see you planning on coming back on Thursday, but hopefully I'll see you before then tonight at 7 p.m.